with midterm elections just a few months out, inflation and rising gas prices both weighing heavily on voters. In fact, according to an ABC Ipsos poll, more than eight in 10 Americans say the economy is either an extremely or very important issue determining how they will vote. And it was just last week that the Labor Department announced inflation hit its highest rate in some 40 years. And our next guest will put the blame for that squarely at the White House and on Democrats in Congress. Let me bring in now Senate Minority Whip John Thune. Senator, thank you so much for being with us. I think a lot of people wouldn't be surprised that a Republican is blaming Democrats, maybe for inflation, but we're going yeah. we're gonna to get to Shocking. that in just Shocking. a second. But right. I do want to ask you about the news we saw overnight, what happened in the House. Kind of a bipartisan bill came out of there to protect same-sex marriage. This, of course, uh, in the wake of the Roe v. Wade decision with some say other things like same-sex marriage could be at risk. I want to ask, are you ready in the Senate to, to support that bill as well to somewhat codify same-sex marriage in this country? Well, uh, thanks, T.J., Amy. Good afternoon. Um, we don't know if that bill's coming to the Senate. They did pass a bill in the House last night. And if and when uh, Senator Schumer decides to bring it up in the Senate, then we'll consider it at that time. But uh, as you saw, there was a fairly significant vote, uh, bipartisan vote, last night in the House of Representatives, and I wouldn't be surprised if that were the case in the Senate. But I will, we'll cross that bridge if and when we come to it. Senator Thune, let's move on to the economy and inflation specifically. I'll, I'll directly uh, uh, let everyone know your tweet that uh, we know TJ was referring to. You said or you tweeted, this level of inflation is a direct result of Dems spending since they've taken control in D.C. Where do you believe costs should be and could be cut right now to roll back that tide of inflation? Well, I think if you look at it, Amy, when President Biden took office, the inflation rate was 1.4 percent, well within the Fed's range of 2 percent. Now, as you said, it's a 40-year high, 9.1 percent last month, year over year. Uh, what that represents, according to the Joint Economic Committee in a study they did recently, is about 700 additional dollars per month per family in this country, or about $9,000 a year in higher costs. So I think it comes back to the bill they passed, which we tried to discourage them from passing, and even liberal Democrat economists um, from the Obama administration also suggested this was a really bad idea to flood the zone with a lot of spending, which they did with the $2 trillion bill last year. That overstimulated the economy. Uh, you know, the textbook definition of inflation is too many dollars chasing too few of goods. So it started with the spending. I think the other issue, honestly, is lack of a, a coherent energy policy in this country. A lot of what drives inflation is gas prices. And if you look at the price of gas, it's, it's doubled since the president took office. And I think a lot of that has to do with just not having the supply. They shut down a lot of oil and gas production in this country. I think there are things you can do that, you know, one, stop the, the wasteful spending, unnecessary spending. Don't talk about raising taxes. That would be a horrible idea right now, which is on their agenda. And then come up with a, a coherent energy policy that emphasizes American energy production so that we're not dependent upon other countries around the world. What would you like to do right now, uh, given that, uh, and again, you listed many things, and I, again, I somewhat said it jokingly, nobody's surprised to hear Republican uh, put the blame right. at, the, at the feet of uh, Democrats, but we had the pandemic, and there were a, a lot of things that did happen um, that was kind of out of a lot of people's control with the supply chain issues. A lot of people came right back to the market, and the, the, the demand went up really quickly. And, and I know you talk about the $2 trillion in spending, but a lot of that was to put money back in Americans' pockets who were struggling coming out of the pandemic. So it was a, a lot of things going on there, but what can you do? What can Congress do right now, do you feel? Well, and honestly, T.J., to your point, there, there was $5 trillion in spending in 2020, all done on a bipartisan basis. The $2 trillion came uh, last year after the president took office. And there are things we can do. I worked in a bipartisan way with Amy Klobuchar from Minnesota on a supply chain issue, the Ocean Shipping Reform Act, which is designed to get at some of those bottlenecks that we're experiencing uh, on the, in the ports. And I think, again, as I said before, uh, focusing on and getting the administration to work with us on an energy policy that is American energy. All of, you know, it should be all of the above strategy, but we ought to try to achieve a energy independence in this country. I think that will drive gas prices down, which I think would have a pretty profound impact uh, on inflation. And I just think, again, it would be a mistake right now, which the Dems are talking about, uh, to increase taxes and come up with yet another pretty big spending bill. They're talking about another trillion dollars. I think that would be a huge mistake. But it shouldn't come as any surprise to you or anybody else. It's an even-numbered year. This is an election year. So obviously we're going to be talking about issues that we think impact people's pocketbooks in this country, and certainly inflation uh, represents that. And I just came from a weekend back in, in South Dakota out in the western part of the state, and it is having a profound impact on the economy. In a state like South Dakota, which in the summer months 
uh, depends on the travel industry, and that, you know, gas prices has a, a, a very consequential impact on that. South Dakota Senator John Thune, we really appreciate your time today. Thanks for being on the program. Thanks, Amy. Thanks, TJ. Yeah, enjoy the rest of this even numbered year, uh, <laughs> as they do in DC, right? Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.